Hey everybody, it's Anna. Welcome back to the studio and let's do another tips and tricks video. So today I'm going to show you how to mix paint with just water. So you'll see people say, you know, this is just paint and water. For example, with a Dutch pour. A lot of times that's what people will use. So I have this other video on how I mix my paint with Floetrol, which is for most of my other pours, but I do really like using paint and water for Dutch pours. So let me show you how I do it. Now, the first thing is your type of paint. So there's different qualities of paint. For example, there's tube paints, which are kind of thicker. They're more professional. Even if they're not professional quality paints, they are artist quality paints. And then there's also craft paint. For example, Apple Barrel is a craft paint or Sargent is a craft paint. And both of these are craft paints that I love to use in certain types of pores. But when you're using paint and water, you really can't use craft paint because it won't hold up. You have to use tube paint. So I've got three brands here. I have Creative Inspirations, which I bought at Jerry's Artorama. I have this Blick Studio Acrylics brand, which is from dickblick.com. And I have Master's Touch Acrylics, which I got at Hobby Lobby. So these are the three main brands of tube paint that I use. I do use Amsterdam sometimes, especially for cell activators, but those are much more expensive. So these are the main paints that I use if I'm needing better quality paints. Okay, so then I like to use a kitchen scale, though you don't have to have one, especially for this, because you're not really doing ratios. You're just kind of adding water until it reaches the right consistency. And then I like these little lidded cups. I buy these at Walmart. These are five ounce cups and these are two ounce cups. Um, so these are great because, you know, it mixes just like a regular cup, but you can put the top on. This is especially important when you're mixing paint in water because it gets filled with air bubbles and it's best to mix your paint at least 24 hours before you do your pour or your paints are gonna be so filled with air bubbles it's gonna cause problems. So that's why having a cup that's got a lid is especially good for this type of paint mixing. And then I have my water in just like a sauce bottle that makes it easier to dispense into the cup. And then of course, got some popsicle sticks. So that's all that you need. So let's go ahead and start with this brilliant yellow green from Blick Studio Acrylics. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix each one. I'm gonna use my scale so that I can keep track of how much water compared to paint, you know, the approximate ratio of paint to water that I'm using. Not that you have to follow that as a rule, it's just showing you about how much I am mixing in. So for the Blick Studio Acrylics, let's go ahead and turn it on. Turn on the scale. So it's zeroed out already. Well, put the stick in and zero that out. All right. So I'm going to add about two thirds of an ounce of paint. There we go. Six tenths is close enough. All right, so when you're mixing paint in water, you cannot add the full amount of water all at once. Don't do it. Your paint will turn into lumps and it will be impossible to mix them all in. What you need to do is add just a little bit at a time. And then you mix. You get that little bit of water incorporated into your paint. And when it's smooth and creamy and fully incorporated, then you add some more and you just keep doing that until your paint reaches the point that you like it. So there it's nice and creamy, fully incorporated. So we'll add some more. OK, 
Okay, that's fully mixed. The main thing is you don't want to add so much water that your paint cannot all mix in easily. If you try it yourself and you add too much water, you will realize the problem that you've made because it's really hard to track down those paint lumps and get them kind of squished and mixed in. Whereas if you do it really slowly, then you don't have any of those really thick paint lumps because they've slowly been softened by the water that you've added. I don't know if you can see how full of bubbles that is. It's almost hard to see how it flows because it's so full of bubbles. But I believe this is the right consistency here. It's nice and thin, flows very easily. So let's put that on there. So this is reading 0.85 of an ounce. So 0.6 of an ounce was the paint and only 0.25 ounces was the water. So for this, it's like twice as much paint as there is water about two parts of paint to one part of water, and that's the Blick Studio Acrylics Brilliant Yellow Green. I can't promise that that's the ratio you'll need for every one of their paints, but for this one, that is a good working consistency for me. So let me set that aside and show you the next one. All right, let's do Master's Touch Acrylics. This is Rouge. So, I want actually more, more paint than that. I thought it was going to mix up a little bit more. So for this one, I'm going to add one whole ounce of paint. One point oh two. Pretty close to an ounce. Oh, that's a beautiful color. All right. So again, just add a little bit of water at a time until it's fully incorporated. Okay, so I am close to the top of my cup. Right now I'm at 1.8 ounces, and uh, it's almost at the right consistency. It's still a little bit too thick. But as you can see, for this one, one ounce of paint, I've added, you know, 0.8 ounces of, of water, and it's not quite thick enough. So this, the master's touch so far, at least with this color, the rouge, is mixing at closer to a one-to-one -one ratio, whereas this was like a two-to-one ratio. So different brands will definitely mix, just their, uh, their binders are thicker or thinner. So just, just mix until you get the right consistency, and that's why I can't tell you, here's the percentage of water that you use. You just kind of have to figure it out for yourself. Okay, I'd say this is pretty close to the right consistency. It's a little bit thicker. It's leaving a little bit of a mound, but it's still flowing quite easily and not not leaving much mound at all. So So, let's see. What was our what was our ratio here? Yeah. Basically a 1 to 1 of paint to water for this paint. All right, last one. Now let's do Creative Inspirations. This is Sky Blue. I know different colors have different densities. So 
not every, whoops, not every color, even from a specific brand, is going to weigh the same. Some are going to be a lot heavier, some are going to be a lot lighter, and that may play a part in why some seem to take more water and some don't. All right, so for this blue, I'm doing 0.8 ounces of the paint, kind of splitting the difference between that green and the rouge, and let's go ahead and mix it. All right, so this is pretty much ready. Let me show you the consistency there. So it flows very nicely. Doesn't really leave a mound. In fact, if you dropped it in, you know, from up high, it would sort of make an indent. And that one, as you can see, we started with 0.8 of paint and we're at 0.1 or 1.59, which is essentially, again, a one-to-one -one of paint to water with the Creative Inspiration Sky Blue. So that is how you mix tube paint with water for a Dutch pour or for some other uh, technique involving thin paint. And I hope you found this helpful. Let me know down in the comments if you have ever tried a paint and water Dutch pour and did it work well or did it not work well and do you have a favorite brand of tube paint that you like to mix with water or do you like to do a mix of brands? If you haven't seen the other videos in my tips and tricks playlist, you can check them all out here. And I will see you for my next video. Bye!